would you say to people, whether in Britain, Portugal, Spain, Ecuador, all the places where people looked to you, what did you do wrong? Well, I, I think what we did wrong, we've already discussed, was that we didn't do enough on, uh, on corruption and uh, 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 fighting tax evasion. Um, we didn't give enough space to what we're now discussing, the parallel program. But I would say to them that we were the first to actually break in Europe. In Latin America, of course, there have been lots of examples. But in Europe, we were the first government to the left for 20, 30 years. And uh, in the negotiations, you can say how well we negotiated, how badly we negotiated, Negotiated uh, whether we could have done better, but in the end, a lot of people know what, uh, that our opponents were not arguing about economics and the best way to get Greece out of the, the crisis or the best way to solve the debt crisis. They were wanting for a, uh, were wishing for a series of defeat because uh, a series of victory would encourage others to look in a different direction. So I would say that people should be more tolerant about Syriza because Syriza gave a fight which was for others, yes, and the people trying to defeat us were doing a fight to keep them down. So it's very important at this stage that we have criticism, we are open about the failures of, the, of, of one particular party or another particular party, but it's very, very important to keep a cool head and see that Syriza was in a very difficult situation because people wanted it to fail outside Greece, not so that the Greek people would be humiliated, but so that the Spanish people or the Portuguese people or the Italian people didn't have a, a aspirations above their station in life, which is how uh, the ruling classes tend to think of uh, uh, popular classes. And it worked, didn't it? Well, um, that, uh, I, I'll answer you the way Chu and Lai answered when he was asked uh, how he thought uh, the French Revolution was going to affect history, and he said it was far too early to say. Um, I, I, I don't think you can answer that question, and that's why I'm quite determined that people criticise, but they also engage in politics. You've been at this for an entire year. We've been here filming you doing this for an entire year. Not just you as a, the finance minister, but you as you could, must feel massive disappointment at what has happened this year. Yes, uh, um, I, I do feel that uh, a great deal of disappointment and I do feel that we've lost uh, a lot of battles. On the other hand, I, I, I don't think most people in Syriza were naive that this was going to be a tea party. I mean, if you'd asked me this time last year, before we won the election, how easy it's going to be, uh, unless I was just trying to uh, sort of strengthen the backbone of our people and, you know, trying to... Everybody knew it was going to be very difficult. Everybody knew that uh, the first left government to challenge the status quo of politics in Europe the last 30 years was not going to be uh, met with uh, warm embraces. Uh, did you think you'd implement the third bailout? No, I, I didn't. I think I thought we could uh, avoid that. We've made a tactical compromise and the, the key issue is whether we can incorporate that uh, into a, a, a more radical strategy and in my opinion the answer to that is going Goes beyond Greece. If we are the, if we remain the only radical uh, left-wing party in government over the next of three, four years, then I don't think we will be successful because basically we, there won't be, they, we won't create within Europe a set of forces that are answering different questions and giving different answers to those questions. What will your country look like in ten years' time? if its debts are not written off or otherwise addressed? If the debt problem isn't solved over a 10-year period, then I think Greece, and I would add a lot of other Southern European e economies, face a period of uh, stagnation. I, I grew up in an English school where but the, the schoolmasters still remember the 1930s, the older ones, and they said that it was, they used to call the 30s the devil's decade. And they called it the devil's decade because it was a period of stagnation, it was a period of unemployment, the Jaro marches, and, and so on. That's what will happen to, to Europe and Southern Europe. Without a relief of debt, without Europe dealing with the debt in other countries, it's going to be another devil's uh, decade. Aren't we there now? 
We, we are there now. We, we are very close to that. But I think that we, we still can confront this issue. The debt is a supranational. It's a pro problem that goes well beyond Greece. And the Europeans have to decide whether uh, they want a monetary union that works. Most economists, and I'm talking about over 90% of the economists I know, and not just left-wing economists, uh, even right-wing economists say you cannot have a monetary union without dealing with a debt issue.